Welcome to the Heart of the Cards, a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what we're dealt. With your hosts, Dan Green and Eric Stewart. Welcome back to the Heart of the Cards, a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what you're dealt. As always, I'm joined by the talented voiceover actor, the amazing director, and the fantastic singer-songwriter, Eric Stewart. Oh, I was looking over my shoulder to see who you were talking about. (laughs) (laughs) And I, of course, am joined by my good friend, talented voice actor, director, writer, and amazing artist, Dan Green. Aw. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and we're resuming our conversation about what's called in the hero's journey, the meeting with the goddess. Mm. And um, yes, and we're doing part two of that. And just to recap what that means in the context of the hero's journey, according to Joseph Campbell, um, the meeting with the goddess is the final test of the talent of the hero to win the boon of love or charity, which is life itself and is enjoyed in the encasement of eternity, which is pretty lofty language. Um, But uh, what's so fun about using this grand structure of the hero's journey in the reflection of our own lives is that not only do we find ways that we can resonate with these elements, um, obviously we don't encounter actual magical beings and so forth, but life itself is kind of magical when you give it a little bit of reflection and, and time to consider how these things are meaningful in the context of your own experience. So last time I discussed a moment in my life, a crucial pivotal moment in my education as an actor, where one of my teachers really helped me to re-understand what it was that I was doing, what it was that I was going for, what it was that I was capable of. And, um, and, and today I have another story about a very inspirational figure in my life who also happens to be female. I don't know if we really need to associate the goddess necessarily with, with, uh, the properties of gender, but, um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm eager to talk about this person who has meant so much to me over the years. Um, Eric, did you want to go first this time since I think I went first last time? Uh, sure, if you want me to, that's that's great. Um, uh, and I and I love the. I just feel like I'm, I'm like I'm hogging all the attention. Well, but that would be normal. But that's all right. We can. Oh, right. Cha- no, wait. That's I thought that was your thing. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I, I'm kidding. I. Well, you know, it's it's interesting that you talk about the the goddess and this sort of inspiration because the first thing that comes to mind for me is is the muse the the idea of the muse especially yeah, as a yeah. as a as a songwriter as a um, um, normally uh, in my life my my songs always were uh, dark and moody and bittersweet, but yet catchy, um, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, and and the, I, the fun kind of misery. Yeah, because I, I felt like you know that was my my therapy. We've we've talked about that in in, uh, in previous episodes, and um, but there is definitely. Uh, and I and I think it's a it's it's a newer it's a newer muse. Um, you know, my relationship with my wife Lindsay uh, has actually sure. changed so much of my um, the 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 content of my creativity. Uh, it's 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 strange. I remember the first positive song I wrote. Um, once we were in, uh, together and uh, a good friend of mine who is a fan was like, who, who is, who is this? Where's, where's the Eric Stewart that, <laughs> that we normally know and, and love and listen to? I mean, we like your new music, but it's so happy. Yeah. What's going on? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and in, in particular, I, I, I think that there's, there was a song that I sat down to write once it became clear to me that this was true change in my outlook and my approach to not just uh life and and love but 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 everything just the way that i would approach um things uh-huh. that things yeah. things that were were you know whether it's conflict whatever it was I, it just it changed my my perspective on a lot of things as an independent production company Andromeda greatly benefits from the support of its audience If you're able to contribute as little as a dollar a month, consider going to our Patreon page. Any support you can give means a lot to us creators, and we're excited to bring you more. Visit AndromedaProductions.com and see what's in store. If this is content you enjoy, please like, subscribe, and share on YouTube. It's a song I wrote um, called Wake My Love, and 
in it, mm. I, I truly describe that transformation that Lindsay um, helped guide me through, uh, whether she um, uh, uh -huh. did it with with a conscious effort or not. It was it was it was something that I needed to put into words and into music. And and just the basic the basic premise of it is that in the verses I talk about being someone who is um, uh, I, I used to, you know, dim the lights. I used to um you know, try to find ways to to isolate, to be alone, and and that uh, you know after after one too many um, failed relationships, wasn't even looking for that, and and to, uh, to be you know the 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 poetry version mm -hmm. of it was mm -hmm. I put that those emotions to sleep. I I I, I let them. Oh, interesting. Right. Interesting I, 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 yeah. That's how that's how I I thought of it as. Um, I was basically. That's interesting. Combining that with what you just said about dimming the lights. Yeah. It's almost like you're, you're putting tucking tucking those emotions. Yeah, the and that's how I that's how I approached uh, the verses to the song, explaining what I used to do, and that right. now I'm no longer sleeping because you wake my love and and i just thought that that was a um an interesting way to describe that uh, epiphany that 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 moment of wait a second it's it's not that i don't have it it's just that it's been it's been hibernating right um and and the the love that i have uh for lindsay and the love that she has for me without getting all, you know, romantic and gushy. <laughs> it's just that it's just that 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 energy um, has definitely helped um, me on my journey. I find right, right, I find right. that the material that I've that I've been creating uh, since we've been together, it has has come across now as the other, the the real Eric, the the Eric that's always been the hopeless romantic, the mm -hmm. Eric that that mm -hmm. wants to give, that wants to love, that has maybe made some choices in his life in the past that hasn't been the right situation or the right relationship, and I enjoy it now. It's not corny to sing songs about how much you love someone or how much you mm -hmm. feel loved, mm -hmm. and and as as an artist, I've always tried to do stuff where I've. I, I've presented something that people can relate to as their own story, as their own emotions. I mean, I think that that's the that's the key to any great uh, uh, artist is that um, they're doing something that people can relate to, whether they, you know, uh, whether they feel um, I've been there or, oh, I never thought of it that way or to be mm -hmm. honest. Right. And so. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I definitely think of of as of Lindsay as my goddess and my muse and. I, I didn't expect to find that. I didn't expect that it would change. I mean, we're talking 90% of my creativity had been bittersweet. That's kind of what right, my thing right, was. Right. And I and I love the material that I wrote for that. It was it was stuff that I, I needed to do, but it also was, it was it was true to who you were then. Yeah. And now I am a I really feel like I am a different person because of this this person in my life and that energy in my life. So I think that that would be, that would be my muse, hands down. Um, she's definitely my goddess. And she's hot. I can't. <laughs> and she's hot. I've met her more than once. She's totally hot. Um, I can't think of a better segue into listening to just a little bit of Wake My Love. Thanks, man. Close my eyes and turn 
Wow, that was that was fun. With all those deeper meanings you were just talking about, I, I think I was anticipating something heavy, but that was that was really delightful. Thank you, man. That was delightful. I appreciate it. Um, and I knew you from before Lindsay, and I I wouldn't put these things exactly you know um, as as all just one thing. Like your your personality switched the moment you met her. I saw you changing before that. Mm-hmm. I saw you mellowing in a certain way. Definitely. I mean, I mean that in all of the most positive mm-hmm. uh, associations. And and opening is a part of that. There was there were less barriers. Mm-hmm. There were more nuances, which is again not to trash who you were before. Oh at all. no, I don't take it that it's, way. It's just it's it's an evolution. Yep. It's an evolution. Yep. And um yeah, and I think perhaps in an additional perspective you were open enough to receive that in a way that you may not have been before. I d- and I don't think that I I was I didn't think I was. I really didn't. Um yeah, but yeah. you but you're not the first one to to have said that to me to have noticed that. Oh, I'm sure. And I'm and sure. I and I and I don't I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not I'm not the friend I'm not your oldest friend. I'm not the friend. No, you know, but I haven't you, been in your life the longest. But you know right? me you know me very well. You know me very well. And uh uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't take offense to the fact that the uh, older Eric, um, as wonderful as he might have been on many levels, I mean, there, I, I think one of my friends said to me, "You no longer have that edge. Like you're not, a, you're not, right, you know." Right, a, and right. it's true. I, 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 and just as a quick side note, like we took a, we, we had a situation the other day where we we're going to a show, and I made a dumb mistake, and I went to the wrong address, and. Uh, I even paid for parking at the wrong address. And and then we realized we had to scramble to get across town to the right address. And when we got there, Lindsay turned to me and said, I'm very proud of you. And I said, why? Because I got us here to the right address. And she said, she said, no, you didn't lose your temper. You didn't flip out. You didn't get all stressed about the situation. You just came up with a, a like a like a remedy and we and we moved on and she's like old yeah, she's like yeah. old Eric wouldn't have done that and and I was like that's right which means which means actually ironically younger Eric yeah right. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> old old in the past <laughs> yes when yeah. You were younger. yeah 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 so yeah so I just I just thought that was I just thought that was like another example of like you know at some point you just I don't know. I mean, it's like when I turned 50, I needed glasses. Right. At some point, like a, a, oh, sure. a right, yeah, just yeah, something yeah. just changes immediately. And I really feel like I, I had that 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 switch was flipped um, after I, I, I became involved with Lindsay. And I just don't uh, I don't sweat some of the things that I used to sweat. So anyway. Yeah. 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 For sure. Um, and she, so that's. Part of you being open to it, you being, even though you weren't consciously looking for it, ready for it, mm-hmm. and 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 then that's complemented by somebody who's wonderful. Yeah, you know that. Yeah, Lindsay's no joke. I mean, she's truly awesome, and she makes yeah. a mean macaroni and cheese. By the way, <laughs> the, the <laughs> best reasons to marry anybody. Yeah, I mean, probably. you know, which is uh, why uh, yeah. you know I need to lose a couple of pounds. She also, it's also a good <laughs> and also a good cook. But anyway, um, enough about that. Uh, so, so yeah. So I'm curious to what your uh, example of the goddess is in your life. Yeah. Um, well, I'm I'm really excited to share uh, this story of my relationship to this person. But before I do that, I think I'd like to hear some practical advice. From our magical friend, Tips and Tricks. What do you think? I think, yeah, that's great. He always has something that we can at least digest. Welcome to Wizardly Worlds of Wisdom. I am your host, Tips and Tricks. And I was just catching up with one of my sons the other day, and we caught a bite to eat. He suggested we go for fast food. Well, when I received it, I saw nothing fast about it. It just sat there on my plate. And then he explained it was the quickness with which the food reached our table. And then I thought, when you can create things to appear before you instantaneously, what could be faster? (laughs) I don't know about that. But I do know a thing or two about inspiration. 
First, start by doing. Don't wait for some grand epiphany to give you permission. No, get at it, whether it's drawing, singing, dancing, whatever. Get yourself in motion and the inspiration will follow. Number two, keep track of your ideas. They often come to you in the most unexpected moments. So always have with you a place to capture them, to write them down, to record them, and then you can refine and develop them later. And thirdly and finally, meditate. Give yourself and your mind space to not reflect upon anything but what the mind offers you to see. Very often the best ideas come when we're not thinking. And finally and thirdly, oh dear, I may as well just accept this is the way I am. Not that I mind. I'm happy to give you one more just because I like you. Learn about the history of whatever your creative endeavor is, whether it's acting, sculpture, writing, or animation. Every pursuit has a history to it, and you will benefit from knowing the path others have walked before you. Well, that's all I have for now, but I will look forward to the next time I can share with you some wizardly words of wisdom. Well, once again, words of wisdom from our wizard friend. Oh, that was very alliterated. Um, uh, yeah, I, uh, I got to say, you know, I learn something new from him every time. And it's practical. You can apply it. It, it doesn't get too deep, but you can certainly apply it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, so uh, I'm also going to use an example of, of – this muse-like relationship. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was this... I'm not going to use her real name um, for privacy purposes. Because then you'd but, have to kill um, me, right? You know? And, every, and anybody who listens to, to the show. It's a lot of extra work. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but I became friends with her when I was, oh, I guess it might have been like 14 or so. And she was a uh, few years older. She was actually a friend of, of one of my sisters, which is how I got to know her. But I was pretty comfortable talking to people who were a little older. And, of course, at that time in your adolescence, the difference between 14 and, you know, 16 or 17 is pretty big. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure a lot of those people were just being nice to me. <laughs> but um, but we had enough of a friendship that when I moved uh, from Indiana to New Jersey, which was essentially traumatic for me, um, I, I was really holding on to this to this relationship. And... It was a mixture of friendship and maybe, you know, something amorous. Right, right. right. Um, but, but what was meaningful, what was clear and what was uh, undoubtable was that it was meaningful, right? And so after I, I felt estranged from my previous life, um, I held on to that connection more tightly than, than many others. And, and as I've described in previous uh, episodes of, of The Heart of the Cards, I went through a profound depression mm -hmm. when I was 15. And she was one of the things that helped to keep me from feeling completely without hope, falling thoroughly into despair. And she did that not only by just being a friend that I could call up and talk to, but I also could share some of these creative ideas that I, that I was having, that I was beginning to gel together. It was really after I moved to New Jersey that I started thinking about things in terms of storytelling. I mentioned also earlier that I, I, when I was 10, I had these drawing lessons, and that was the first time somebody asked me to come up with characters right. and think creatively in that way, take initiative in defining what the story's about and who it's about. So with my friend, I would sometimes discuss some of these ideas just in the context of a phone conversation and she would always be receptive to it and she would always listen and of course she would say complimentary things uh, but the more important thing was that she was present mm -hmm. that she was somebody that I felt I could share these things with which automatically made me feel like they had at least on some level value and when you share stuff with your friends chances are they're going to say something nice at least or not too insulting right right so you know you have to filter some of that out as well they're just being nice and objectively really is it any good but 
even understanding that, I felt like the response she was giving me, the encouragement she was giving me, couldn't only be polite, right? It couldn't just be that she was being nice, as it were. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so one of the things, one of my best accomplishments, uh, actually a few of my best accomplishments are related to how I was maintaining this connection with her, uh, while we were in different States. And one of my favorite things that I've ever done was I created this, this is going to, uh, be foreign language to a lot of listeners. I created a mixtape. Oh yeah. So back in the day. Um, you use these physical things, magnetic strips of tape <laughs> <laughs> that recorded sound, and you played. There weren't CDs, um, and it would have actually been harder to do yeah. with CDs. Yeah. Um, but even with just um, uh, a, a, a simple cassette. Oh, and and that was a time where. So there's this uh, boom box or ghetto blaster was a term to describe tape players with better speakers than most. Right. So then they evolved into having what they call duo cassette, which is where you could tape one thing to another. Yeah. Tape, which is how I made, yeah. made what I made. So a, a typical mixtape, which was definitely something that you could just do for parties and, and for, you know, pretty innocuous reasons. But it was also became a part of the courtship behavior mm -hmm. of a lot of people. Like I made this for you. Yep. And all of the songs you chose could be reflective of. Uh, feelings that you had. A very right? romantic gesture. I mean, honestly, not only does it take a lot of time, but it takes a lot of thought. It's it's a very, I love that. If you do it well. But, <laughs> I, took it a, <laughs> but I took it a step further. And not only did I have a, a mixtape with, with songs, but I also would cut in uh, Monty Python skits. And, and I tried Ooh. to come up with some of my own stuff. So it was almost like an... Uh, a show, an audio show of some of some kind. And how old were you at this point? Fifteen to sixteen. Very impressive. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. But I'm going to take it even a step further. And I was like, okay, this is not enough. Um, and this was like my favorite thing to make. This was my favorite thing to think about when I should have been doing my homework or paying attention in class. Uh -huh. And um, and there is something really fun about presenting yourself with the challenge of creating something that's compelling for 90 minutes or 45 minutes on each side, mm -hmm. which is what tapes used to be. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I thought, okay, I'm going to cap it off with what I called an Indiana Jones adventure. And what that amounted to was five or so pages of penciled comic book artwork accompanied by an audio track of what's going on in the comic. And it was an Indiana Jones adventure with, of course, Indiana Jones. Yes. But also with my friend as part of the story. Oh. And in the audio, I did all of the other stuff. And it had, you know, parts of the soundtrack and some sound effects. And, and I just did all the other voices. And, of course, I was delighted to cast myself as Indiana Jones. Of course. But for her lines, I left it blank so she could read those out loud. That is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. <laughs> I mean, people, wait, wait, we need to take a step back. For those of you yes, who have yes. never used a cassette player to do this, a cassette recorder, even with, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the, the idea that you were mapping this out like that, we're not talking about digitally editing in Pro Tools or whatever. Oh, no, that makes it so much no, easier. No, th that is, I am very, very impressed with that. <laughs> No, it's that's that is brilliant. Well done. Yeah, well, I uh it took me forever to finish the drawing. Um but uh unfortunately uh, something that's true with Crossing the Gods. But when I work <laughs> Crossing the Gods, I can't help but think of of that because I mean Crossing the Gods we're doing it black and white, yeah, right? True. No, it's not it's not just pencil work, right? Right? And and we're um we're describing it as an illustrated audio drama, mm -hmm. not as a piece of animation, because as as you and I went back and forth on, um, we didn't want to set expectations of it being what most people would think of when they think of animation. Because right. it's not. Right. It doesn't have all the tween movements the, as, as it's sometimes referred to in the industry. And that's not right. to so, say that we also chose this because we enjoy this format. Like it's... Oh, I, yes. It's we, a, it's yes, a, it's we, a like, we like what yes, it is. It's really cool. We like what it is. Yes. Yeah. 
And anybody who we've shown it to, um, they they have unanimously said, again, not just being nice, that the the lack of that other tweening motion in no way interfered with their ability to involve themselves in the story. Sure. Right? Yep. So part of what I think we enjoy about our Crossing the Gods experiment is that it gets to the simplicity of storytelling in a certain way. Mm-hmm. You know, like, what do you really need to to actually be involved? And it also speaks to the power of sound. Yes, you know? yes. Yeah, yeah. So when I received her letter back in in response to having received what I gave her, it was one of my favorite things. It was, and it was perfumed, and it was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was, you know, it, 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 so it felt very... Uh, she sent me something special back, right? Yeah. Um, so, and then, like, years later, I, I created an, a piece of video because I was able to get my hands on a video camera, not one that my family owned, but a friend of mine had. And so, um, and, and, and I was uh, really interested in, in creating stuff uh, with video as well. So, for my entire life, I've always had an interest in creating stuff through visuals and through audio. And then the career of my life has had um, to do with participating in that, right? Adding a voice to or, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, that sort of a thing. Uh, Sometimes directing something, whatever. But but it's the stuff where I get to actually make something that really drives me forward it it really gets my engine going well you had an you had an audience too like you had I'm, well that's what i mean that's yeah. what, getting back yes exactly yes yeah. I, I mean that's what's so that's what's so fantastic about this story is that um especially cuz you you also mentioned that at, this is a time when you were going through a lot of difficulty um absolutely and we we as as artists tend to try to find our escape and so you being creative and finding you know your 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 escape in your drawings and whatever you also had a, a, someone to direct this to as an audience and get that yes. and 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 you know could it have been uh 500 people sure but you chose to pick one person who you cared about, who you trusted their opinion, who you you also you also felt was going to be um, uh, someone who would who would also listen, right? Who would give you that yes, time? Yes. And you created an amazing piece of work. I mean, yeah. The music stuff. I love the fact that that you did that. Then the comedy <laughs> stuff because you're funny and you wanted, you know, you wanted to make her laugh, and and these things made you yeah. laugh. So you were sharing. You know, it's fun to watch a funny movie alone, but it's even more fun when you're next to someone and you're both cackling together, right? It's, sure. Because sure, laughter is sure. contagious. It's fun like that. So you were doing that right. with with that with with that addition. But then to add the story. And giving her a role in that story, I mean, talk about a, um, you know, this is a, a larger than than just the creation on the cassette. You were you were putting her in your story. And yeah. and that yeah. is really that's pretty deep coming from, you know, a young teen. I, I think that's incredible. <laughs> I think it's incredible. And, yeah. Well, thanks, man. I uh, um, and yes to all those things. And another thing adding into the value of, of having an audience if your relationship to that audience is compelling to you, it brings the best out of you. Mm-hmm. And and also, as somebody who understands what a mixtape used to be, <laughs> when you're sharing stuff that you like, you're also sharing parts of yourself. Totally. You're, totally. Right? You're, you're sharing your sensibilities. You're sharing your tastes in ways that you can't really describe well, you could describe verbally, but it doesn't really get the message across as well as simply sharing it. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. And we were friends for that, that period of time and up through my college years. Actually, And we were, weren't really sure what to make of our relationship. But when she was, and we dated other people, we never really dated. Um, but when she was pregnant and I was like... I don't know, just just about to graduate college, um, months away from graduating college. Um, and she became unexpectedly pregnant, but decided to to go forward with becoming a mother, despite not being completely sure about the father. And um, and that relationship ultimately didn't last. Um, but uh, 
but she felt it was relevant to her to check in with me about this stage of her life. Wow. Which which I think, yeah, that speaks to the level at which we felt connected. Yeah. And, yeah. And <laughs> and we pretty much, you know, stayed in touch for, uh, I don't know, many years after that. But then we fell out of touch for like almost 10 years or so or more. And um, not that we burned a bridge or anything like that, but, you know, people fall out of touch. And that's, as you grow older, you find that that's not uncommon, right? Right. Um, and that, and that's also not invalidating of a relationship. But we reconnected within the last year or so. And we were <laughs> recently talking about that, that moment she called me when she, when she was pregnant. And she reflected back to me something that I had forgotten. But it, I, I bring it up because it's germane to this conversation and, and what we're d- doing with the heart of the cards with the hero's journey stuff. She said that I, I quoted Joseph Campbell to her. <laughs> really? <laughs> which, yes. And uh, which I was like, you know what? That sounds like me at that age. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, and the quote had something to do uh, with the idea that the the adventure that the hero is presented with is the adventure that they're ready for, even if they don't know it. Hmm. Now, have you expressed to her that you have you? I'm sure. Maybe, well, I'm not sure, but that's why I'm asking you. Um, did you tell her how meaningful that interaction was to help you on your journey? Like your oh yeah, I mean your, oh yeah 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 the, oh yeah yeah from the mixtape and and all of that that oh sure yes sure yes. I I've I've expressed that to her in retrospect, and I think she knew at the time right 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 how do you receive something like that? I mean those comic book pages, uh, they're eleven by sixteen. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's you, that's what you don't yeah. you don't receive you don't receive that in the mail and be like, oh, whatever. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're a kind person, you don't say, oh, whatever. But, you you know, so, yeah. some of my ex-girlfriends would uh, argue with you. But um, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah. but I think that that's yes, you put so much effort and love and care into this presentation. Um, Yeah. How could you not? I guess how could you not realize the impact that she was having uh, on you? And uh, yeah, that's I mean that's great. I mean, thank goodness you you had that outlet too. Thank goodness you had that audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to be clear, it's not like nobody else in my life was encouraging. No, I don't mean to characterize it that way. But that was the most persistent, meaningful, and earliest relationship where. She helped validate that part of myself. Yeah, and you mentioned this this idea of like who the audience is, right? Like the connection yeah, we have yeah. with, and and this it's not an ego thing. It's the it's it's I look at the the relationship no, no, between no, no. the whether it's the performer or the uh, uh, and and the audience or it's the artist and the audience. It's a dance. It's really a dance. Um, how we yeah. how we interact yeah. with each other and, um, the fact that this person was someone you wanted to connect with on that level i think that we have we have different types of of relationships with the quote unquote audience some some audiences we're there to, it's you know great we're going to do our thing we we're, we're going to entertain or if someone doesn't really get what we're doing okay but then there's also there are those specific people or groups of people that we feel so connected to that we we really want them to get it like it means yeah. it means more yeah. like I, I've said that I could play in front of, um, you know, a, a hundred thousand people. But the, the there's there, there could be five people in that audience that I, that I really that's who's uh, that's whose feedback I really am looking forward to um, be, right. because I right. uh, that's that's the connection. I have a connection with those particular people. Um, so yeah, so that's that's what you that's what you got. You got other support from other people, and maybe other people meant a lot to you in that. You know, of, of course, getting it from sure, your your sure. sisters or your your mom and things like that. My everybody in my family was always supportive. Right, they never told me like you're stupid, but it's different. Right, and you said that sometimes you think, well, are they saying this because they they care about me, and then they're not going to tell me something that's going to be discouraging and negative? But this was a this was a relationship where you felt she's going to be honest with me. But she's also she also gets what I'm doing, so it's yeah, yeah it's important yeah. it's important to connect with her uh, on on this level. And if I can connect this to the story that you shared about Lindsay, mm-hmm. 
the audience brings something out of you, right? Right. But you're also able to see or looking for a different audience depending on where you're at. And maybe that edgier Eric couldn't see a better kind of relationship until you became able to let yourself be more, Mm -hmm. more comfortably. Yeah. Well, you were, you were, your whole message about this journey that, that we have been discussing, um, is not just about, um, your own place, but how you are able to let people in or let situations help guide you, um, to not be so closed minded, to not be so just stuck in your ways that you're, that you're not open. I mean, that's a, that's a big word that, um, I'm glad you use, um, because that's something that I think is, is a which word, which word open being open. 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 Mm-hmm. You you mm-hmm. you have you have laid that out enough that it, it's an important part of our conversation. Um, yeah. People and it's and it's a it's a gutsy thing to do. Sure, sure. I mean, we we yeah. we, we yeah. talk about trying to inspire some of the creative people we meet, and they uh, oh I I'm not good enough, or I, there, there's too much competition, or I you know uh, my my parents don't want me to do this, or um, oh and right. and and if you're open to whatever may come from it and just right. try it, then you might find your, your happiness. You might find your, your, yeah. your, your, your success in, in just doing what you love. As, and, and you as were, Joseph Campbell would say, your bliss, follow your bliss is a big catchphrase. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so here's an example of both of us have giving examples of people that, um, Enabled that. Enabled yeah. that. And, and we were both open to, uh, you know, I was, I was um, surprisingly open to a change in my, in my attitude about things. And you were looking, you were you're looking for that. And she gave you that opportunity to open up with all of your feelings that maybe you were keeping to yourself too um, in your, in your, in your difficult stage of, of that transition yeah. you were going yeah. through. I, w- I was desperate for a different kind of connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and uh, let's bring this to an end yeah. um, uh, for today. Um, but going off of what you just said, uh, you have to have courage. You have to be bold. And, and I think it's important to clarify that courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is what you need to fight the fear. Somebody who is fearless is not brave. Somebody who is courageous has fear and acts anyway. And being open means being open to being hurt mm-hmm. as well, mm-hmm. being disappointed. And that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. That's going to happen, even when you try your hardest. But um, more often than not, you will find some kind of positive connection. And in this, this example of, of the goddess, um, yeah, that's, that's what this speaks to. You will have an experience in your life. Of, of what will feel like it's uplifting, it will feel nearly supernatural, but you will never have that if you aren't open to it and brave enough to go for it. Yes, very well said. I, I, think, I think that's great. And yes, the, 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 the journey might have some places where you stumble and the journey might have some yeah. things that are, but, but I, I like that you're, you're, you're talking about the fear as something that can be uh, used um, to be a hero. So I look at fear as, or nervousness, anything like that is just another form of yeah, energy. That, yeah. Right. Sure. Right. And yep. so you can either let it cripple you or you can embrace it and use it. And yes. And you, uh, you have said that more yeah, than once. And, I was there. Yeah. Yes. Yep, that, and that, and that really is important. I mean, I think, yeah. I, I think that we can, we can embrace that. And, and, and yes, if you only, if you don't do things because you fear everything that possibly could go wrong, you're never going to do anything. It's true. It's true. <laughs> <You know. laughs> All right. Well, Eric, always a pleasure talking with you. You too, Dan. Thank you so much. Yeah. And next stop on the hero's journey, we're going to talk about uh, what is called uh, the temptress. Um, again, we don't need to genderize it, but um, but that's going to speak to the things that knock us off our path. Mm. The little voices, maybe those voices of fear that try to convince us, give up, don't do it. 
You're not worthy. Oh, I'm sure. You're deluded. I'm sure we both yeah. have a lot of examples of that. Oh, I think <laughs> anybody can relate to that. Yes. Anybody can relate to yes. that. Even if it's not about like a grand design on your life, it's just, it's just as something as simple as, oh, should I say hi to that person I like? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's had that. Well, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that conversation, my friend. Sure, sure. We'll try to keep it under three hours. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, thanks for joining us for another installment of The Heart of the Cards. Always a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what you're dealt. See you next time. Thanks for listening to The Heart of the Cards with Dan Green and Eric Stewart. We hope this conversation in some way spoke to you. Whatever your journey, we look forward to crossing paths again in the next episode. This is Veronica Taylor, and on behalf of Andromeda Productions, we wish you well. Andromeda, always a sound choice.